Olympics, Judge Andrew Napolitano, John Stossel, Greg Gutfeld, and a man-packed party panel. What more could a girl want? Well, maybe a 15-pound baby, a world-class ass, and for Kanye to leave the country. But don't worry, we'll have all that a little later on in the show. Strap on your goggles. It's raining men. It's the independents. Hi there, I'm Kennedy, along with Reason Magazine editor-in-chief, the man who puts pencil to paper and tells people what to think. His name is Matt Welch, and that pen means business. Camille Foster is also with us from Free Think Media. Together, we are the independents. We have a nose for truth and don't adhere to any sticky partisan nonsense, especially when it smells like Gouda. But with us tonight for the very first time earning his wings of independency, it's Greg Gutfeld, decorated, best-selling author and host of The Five and Red Eye. Greg is the kind of person who exudes warmth and kindness as he eviscerates you with his wit and steely intuition. And I think, unbeknownst to him, He's a sacred libertarian, mm. or at least an independent. Welcome to the independence. Uh, it's great to be here. Congratulations on your amazing show. Well, thank you. Congratulations on your amazing success. Oh, no, congratulations on you first. And thank <laughs> you for uh, wearing the blue view neck sweater. I, you know, I'm trying to, the way Camille is trying to, uh, to uh, bring back the cardigan tie combination. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to bring back the kind of like, uh, I don't know, the 1970s, the My Three Sons look, uh, which didn't end well for any of them. But I'm trying to bring it back. Yeah, it's like my two and a half sons now after the lobotomy. Yeah, Here it's kind of sad. sad, really. Mm. Yes. <laughs> well, Greg, welcome and thank you. And are you, in fact, an independent or libertarian or both? I was a registered. Okay, just for the the the, the exact phrase, I was an independent until I changed. And, and I don't care about party affiliation. I don't yeah, care how yeah. you okay. register with the county, oh, but the, in your in your heart, in your corazón. Then forget that story. Uh, yes, I am an independent because I don't like uh, having to check each box of beliefs because I find those people boring. There was a uh, Penn Jillette, uh, once he had this rule of thumb on people. If, 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 a per if you know two things about a person and you can predict the third one, you don't want to be around that person. So for example, if they smoke pot, listen to the dead, but they're radical capitalists, that's a good person. Mm. But if you're vegetarian, you work for Greenpeace and you volunteered for Obama, stay away. So it's, a, it's the idea that you can't, it, it's not being unpredictable for the sake of being unpredictable. It's just looking at issues rather than affiliations. But it, and it's also what the predictability says about you because yeah. you're not necessarily living authentically, I think. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you think other people want you to do. And who wants to be around someone who's just a shell of a person? And that, you know what, the, the, what I've noticed, I call it the bouncer syndrome, which is, and it happens to uh, newbies in any uh, kind of group, whether it's conservatives or liberals or libertarians, it's that you're not conservative enough. Yeah, I don't, it, like, I don't like the litmus test, I agree. Yeah, and, it's, and, and so they're bouncers. They're bouncers. They just, uh, they, like, they go, you know what, they'll call you a rhino because there's one thing you disagree with them. Or you're not, you're not a libertarian if you actually think the NSA is doing a good job. It's like, do I, you know what, screw you. I don't, I don't like clubs with velvet ropes, so I don't want to be around you. Yeah, you and, and I, don't, I don't like when people just, you know, cut you out because of, of one thing you say or believe. Which yeah. you tried to do to me here on a nightly basis. I'm just kidding. But so uh, you, uh, you were from Berkeley, right? You went to high school in Berkeley, so you were surrounded yeah. by Berkeley people. You live in Manhattan now. You're surrounded by Manhattan people. What would happen to you if you moved to, like, Omaha or, or Orange Houston County, or Orange County or something? It's a good question. I grew up, actually, in San Mateo, which is a, a suburb of San Francisco Peninsula oh, area. San Mateo. Yes, it's oh. quite big. By the way, I went to high school uh, with uh, Barry Bonds, who was a jerk. And, uh, was he juicing you, in high school? What? Was he juicing in high school? No, he was really skinny, but he had a big head. See, pumpkin head. Yep. There, there you go. <laughs> there you go. He used to sit behind me in Spanish class. I've told this story many times. But he's a year older than me, and he used to kick my chair to get the answers from my test. So he was cheating back then. <laughs> his brother, Ricky, was much nicer. He was, in my, he was my age. And his dad kind of coached here and there on the, on the teams. How we, I apologize for talking oh, about the bonds. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, to your question, you're, you're asking me, did I become a conservative? No, like, I, I, I think, I think you're like, right. You like to punch hippies a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I, I you need the contrast yes. in order to feel fully. I, I, say, I said this uh, at a speech at a, at a reason thing. With, uh, years ago, I said I became a conservative after being around liberals, and I became uh, um, a libertarian after being around conservatives. And the, the reason is, is both have a sense of moralism uh, that can be really irritating. And it's, it's the difference between uh, um, neighborly caring 
in fake global caring. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Which is that, a, that imposed, yeah. rejected. Yeah. You you are obligated to feel this way. Yeah, exactly. And that's and and it's 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 probably in my opinion because maybe I'm biased. More evident among the liberal side than there is conservatives. And in conservatives, it t often takes place in religious ways. Yeah. Like, I will pray for you, you atheist. <laughs> which I get. I, usually, I love that one, though. I usually get that. It's so funny. Love the sinner, hate the sin. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Hallelujah. I will pray for you. I go, that's not a nice thing to say. Unless you really <laughs> are, do want to pray for me, then that's good. But saying it in that kind of manner. They're praying at you. Yeah, they're praying right. at it's, me. It's condescending. Yeah, it is no, condescending. It's, it's aggressive prayer. All right, well, <laughs> the winds of change are wafting through the New York air like granddad after four bowls of five alarm chili. Why is every big government liberal so dead set on using oppression as a tool for social change? In New York City, an elderly man was beaten by police for jaywalking, part of the mayor's zero vision policy. It's actually called Vision Zero, but it really does have zero vision to combat elderly jaywalkers, right. I think. Yeah, I, I, I can safely come out and say I'm against beating up. Uh, elderly Asian men. That's a, that's a strong I mean, stand, it, Greg. Can you? I mean, unless there's a website where elderly men go to get beaten up, then I'm for that. <laughs> I am for that. But Perhaps there's a party involving citrus. Exactly. Uh, but if. I don't understand the citrus joke. That's okay. It's been kept. It's okay. <laughs> okay. But no, I, you know, it's. Uh, Somebody, I, 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 I'm a big supporter of the police. Every now and then they make a mistake, and this clearly was probably a mistake. Do you know one one of the best things? Boy, was that wishy washy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm even embarrassed. No, but I know exactly. It's what the you idea said. that we need to uh, save pedestrians' lives by issuing jaywalking tickets. Yes, that's, that's uh, just like we need to save, you know, uh, poor people's lives by making sure they can't drink big gulps. Like, yeah, the, yeah. Living in New York is is so shocking for me as a Californian because New York was supposed to be all tough and and, and badass. And we have all these ridiculous... Yeah, but the, the face-off with, with big government laws between New York and California, it's a little ridiculous. Because in California, bartenders now have to wear... Wear gloves. Rubber gloves. Yes, which, by the way, I happen to like because I'm into the whole glove thing. But <laughs> it's all <laughs> about... Also... It's the mandated glove. <laughs> it's mandated glove. It's about... It's, people believe that you should be able to outlaw or ban something because there's a risk to it. And I said this a couple of days ago, that you'd have to ban, air, you'd have to ban snowboarding and skydiving, and you'd have to ban construction work. Because, and driving. Yeah, driving. You have to ban everything. That's because right. there's, an element, there's an element of risk in everything we do. Okay, so if you're obese, it puts you at risk for, for dying sooner and, and yeah. developing heart disease and diabetes. But if you're obese in New York City and you get hit by a car or a cab, you survive. That's what the, the research showed, that obese people huh. are actually insulated oh, really? from the deadly injuries that most jaywalkers get. So skinny jaywalkers are more likely to die in New York. That, uh, there was also a story about a famous mobster who was shot like 13 times or nine times because, and he survived because he was fat. He was like, had his own little the, bullet catcher. <laughs> he was like, he, did, he, he didn't, he, I mean, he was like, you know, the guys were just shooting at him and it was like, one went there, one went there, and he's just like, God, I can't feel it. I can't feel it. So there is, there is a benefit to being obese. If you, let's say you, you're stuck on a des, uh, deserted island, your plane crashes, you're gonna outlive everybody unless they eat you. Oh, well. Yeah. It would be, that, that might be a little sinewy, or not sinewy, it'd be chewy, just chewy fat. I don't know. This is the, I think this is going to be our A block for the five. What do you got? <laughs> you should text Dana now. Yes, I will. All right, Greg, I thought we will, uh, we'll see you always on the five and red eye. Thanks for coming by. Can I ask you what that story is uh, about the big butt you're doing? Yeah, you haven't seen Booty Girl? Yes, I have, but I was afraid to do it. But if you're going to do it, then I'm going to do it. No, Booty Girl has, I mean, this it's is... It's the most this incredible is, thing I've ever is, seen. See, this Pretty is wonderful. why yeah. you need um, more women on your show. I mean, in addition to Andy, is because <laughs> we will show you how science, science has proven that having a big butt is better. Yeah. So... I'm going to do that story tonight on Red Eye. Very is that good. Dr. Mix-a-Lot yes. that proved that having a big butt is better? <laughs> that is he exactly what so. it is. Yeah, he's he's got the prescription and the yeah. booty will cure you. All right, uh, thanks again. My pleasure. The Five weeknights on Fox Business, I mean Fox News Channel. <laughs> Hi, and Red Eye also on Fox News Channel at 3 a.m. Eastern. All right, from my sparkling cockles and beyond, Judge Napolitano is back and he's fired up about Snowden. And that's coming up next a little later. Oh, no, next we're going to have the panel, the judges later. This is so great. They're going to tackle Target, Obamacare, and college sex assault. Stay here.